All right, welcome back to the channel. So today, Ryan and myself are doing a test, basically same loft, two different clubs. So a driving iron versus a five wood right now. Um, RB, what do you use in your bag right now? So I actually carry a three wood and a five wood. Sometimes I carry a seven wood. So something like a seven wood made a little longer. So it's like a really weak five wood. Mm -hmm. And the big reason is as much as I, every time I look at one of these things, I love the look of it, like love a driving iron. Every time one comes out, I'm like, yeah, I could probably go on my bag this time. But a shot over water, a, a long par three, zero confidence. Yeah. All yeah. I know is I get that five wood out and I just, or seven wood and just launch it to the back of the green. Feels a lot more comfortable than trying to hit one of these. I'm exactly the same. I play three wood and a five wood and I'm like you, I would love to use a, a driving iron, but uh, sometimes lay the sod over it a little bit more often than uh, with a driving iron. So um, interesting to see what these two clubs do, how they perform differently. Um, and really the, the benefit of this test is to show you guys out there, you know, what, what's really gonna work for two different handicaps, two different speeds, um, and ultimately see, you know, what's gonna be the best for, for each player. A lot of conversations with, with other club fitters, as well as engineers from like the other, like the various OEMs, and they say, just because like the loft is a, a particular number, doesn't mean it's gonna perform anywhere near the same. And, you know, for example, like, this two iron, although it is a very forgiving, quote unquote, two iron driving iron, it's not gonna perform anywhere near what the five wood's gonna perform. I've got them set to the exact same loft, but they are you know, different shafts, of course, mm -hmm. but they're very different length golf clubs. They're gonna get swung in different dynamics. So you know, I'm, I'm actually really curious to see how this performs. Love it, awesome. So 220 um, is what the target's set at. We are gonna start with the U505. All right. And strike. Now there's a chunky one that'll get kind of close, but... Got away with it a little high on the face. Yeah. If the target's 220, not likely gonna get there with this golf club, right? Like, I'd like to say that I could, but... It's fine. Yeah, it's it's doable. It just shows that there is uh, you know a smaller margin of error with uh, with the driving iron. Um, but give me give me two more with this one. It feels good when you hit it. Though. I know, I know. When they first released these, they gave us the four irons. We were hitting the four irons in the bay, and it was just like, why don't I use this as a four iron all the time? <laughs> and strike. Land angle is still something that's like not because I create so much loft with this thing, like it's not that I'm afraid of the land angle. In fact, they probably don't get as much distance out of it that I could, mm -hmm. but I'm just not very consistent. Yeah, give me, uh, give me one more with that so we get four. Now, that, like, it's not a great shot, but that's an example of a shot that I would probably hit with this golf, like that I did hit with this golf club because I'm oftentimes scared of creating so little loft that I just launch it into the turf. Yep. So. No, I would uh, agree with you on both of those. Okay, RB, jump into the five wood. Just looking down, it's, it's so much more confidence inspiring. It's got a much wider sole. We're talking about one of the, like, as far as technology is concerned, something that is just packed with it. Mm -hmm. And I, again, the confidence level that I have with this, although the lofts, are, again, lofts are different, very different club design, the idea of being able to hit a shot where I'm comfortable doing so, like, hugely different. And that's the thing too, like off, off a tee or, or off a ferry, you have to carry it over water or get it over some, some trouble. That is way more inviting to hit than, than that driving iron. We hit the driving iron really well, but the minute you thin it just a little bit, you're in way more trouble than if, you, if you're, you know, to thin this one. So yeah. let's see a couple with this five wood. All right. Great strike. Landed like a little bird. Well, that's that test done. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is too, like some people might look at it and say like, my, my path is really open, my face mm -hmm. is really open. Like a five wood for me is not a distance golf club. No. It's, it's a specific distance point, it's golf It's your club. point and shoot, your safety club. Exactly. I, I, again, first time ever playing a five wood last season. For me, it's 
it's a safety club. It's uh, it's one that could hit off a tee, hit it low, hit it high. It just it's a it's a I mean, it's a utility club really. Um, those 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 last two strikes there. I mean, you know, peak height was significantly different, and um, you know, even on the ones like you said, you you might leave the face open a little bit. If that's what you're gonna call a a miss hit in a way, you can go play golf with that shot any day of the week. Yeah, and, and this, like being in this range setting, like I'm trying to hit it close to that green. I'm not trying to just see how far I can hit it. I'm, I'm really focusing on trying to get to that specific target mm -hmm. just because it is. If I'm out of the rough, no, or off a fairway, I got to carry something. That's this entire like pro thought process for me is what's going to get me closest to that, that flag. Yeah. So. That was like the little chunky high face one, and it just goes. As a fitter, the fit would end right here. As a friend, I'm telling you, you can keep the driving iron at home. That uh, the Stealth 5 would, uh, should stay in the bag all, all day long. Your turn, Mike. Let's do it. All right, Mike. What do you think putting the 505 down? I, like I said earlier, when we first got these in, I played a lot with the, with the 4 iron. I actually took it out one weekend, and I was like, this is, this is so easy. Higher, easier to hit. Um, Again, I do not gravitate towards the driving iron. You look down, you see the number two on the bottom. It's like looking at an old one iron. I just, it's not for me. I, I've, I, fear, the, I fear the driving iron. I don't want to hit it low and skinny. And I know the miss is, is a lot bigger with, with this, but uh, excited to see how it performs. A lot of it comes down to the style of golf course you play. Now, if you play a very firm golf course and you can hit this shot, it's, it's very, it's still an accessible golf club. You have the club head speed and you have the delivery, but you know, we play a lot of golf when it's soft. Like this is this is not a shot where you're gonna hit, be able to hit a, a rolling out club all the time. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Let's hit a couple. What I what I find really interesting is our dynamics into the golf ball are very different. Yeah. With yeah. this golf club, but you know, to see how this club reacts for you versus me. Is interesting to take home because I, I add a lot of loft, I mm -hmm. hit it up in the air. Definitely. Like you get more out of this golf club because you're delivering less loft, you're hitting you're really like hitting it a lot lower totally. by design. Definitely. Good strike there. So that, that one carried to our, our distance target, like carried to event to total wise, mm -hmm. carried over two hundred yards. Yeah. Was that, would you call it a great strike or how would you? No, you, you... no, a little face open, kind of little, little thin, just, you know, probably didn't trap it enough. All right, let's see a couple more. Okay. Oh, great strike there. A low chaser for the links. Yeah. When you're in a fitting with someone, who would be the target player that would come in to fit into, for example, the, the U505? Yeah, I mean, we're generally gonna see someone with a, a fraction more speed, well, a lot more speed than you, know, than you and I. Um, and, and someone that's really looking for, a lot of guys that come in for a driving iron that I'm working with, they're looking for that T club. They play a tight golf course, they need something that they don't lose a ton of control over. They're, they're good iron players, a little steep on the ball. Um, you know, I always find that that's kind of that, that core demographic for a, a driving iron player. Would it come down a lot of times to, to being very course specific, right? Like to hit a, a particular yardage or maybe not necessarily for us, but for someone playing in drier, firmer conditions more often? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I know, look, you know, you talk about, you know, the PJ Tour going over to you know, the open, going to play in Scotland or whatever, they, they take the, the fairy woods out and add a driving iron, they take, you know, the high bounce wedge out and they add the low bounce wedge. At that level, yes, that makes a huge difference for, you know, for the average golfer, you know, regardless of the handicap, I think just knowing what you need on your golf course, that's the biggest thing. Whether it's wet or dry, I think you can, you can benefit from having a driving iron in the bag regardless of the conditions that you're playing. It, it all depends on placing that golf ball around the golf course as efficiently as you possibly can. I, I had a great fitter at uh, Titleist one time. I was there for an experience, and Glenn, I'm going to give you a shout out here. He's had this great line, and it was, it's always easier to make up, come down, 
than it is to make down go up. Because mm. to do that, you have to fight gravity. Yeah. It's a lot easier to make a golf club that's designed to go higher, hit it lower. And for those that, I mean, if you already hit it really high, sure, you can go into something like this golf club. And we're not deterring people from using driving irons. It's really not the point of this. But it's to showcase what they're going to do compared to something with the exact same loft. And uh, now we've got, we've got our little set with our, our driving iron. So let's move into your five. What do you got yep. there, Mike? Little TSI 2 5 wood. Again, Ventus Red uh, 7S. All right, let's, cool. let's do it. When you're, when you're on the course, mm -hmm. what would be, you know, as, as someone who is a new 5 wood user, Right, when, you, when you're on the course and you're, is it a long par three you're using it is? Are you using it to approach a par five? Like where, yeah, where are there's, you uh, there's, Yeah, at my home club, there's, there's a, a long par three that I would use it for, but generally, um, like I said, there's, you know, there's not a, a par five until 13, so there's a couple, couple par fours that we're, we're definitely using it off the tee, or, or you know, there's a couple long par fours that if you just catch yourself off the tee the wrong way, you're, you're definitely putting five wood into, into play. Good one there. Get away with it. Now, do you, do you think you would have gotten away with it, that same kind of strike with the driving iron? No. No, that would have been a uh, lay the sod over it for sure. <laughs> Good strike there. Thanks. All right, I think we got our set, Mike. Yeah, I just think the the higher launching, a little bit easier. Even if you miss it, it, it performs a little bit better. It's it's just confidence more than anything. I think that's why I really like the five wood this year. I, I played a a 19 degree hybrid for for years, and when you strike it great, it feels awesome. But just even that little low miss on it, and it, you're in trouble. So the five wood to me just just include add so much confidence to the game. So we, we both went through our, our little experimentation here with uh, both the driving iron and the five wood. And uh, let's take a look at our data here. Definitely, I mean, it's, it's interesting, obviously, we know ball speed's gonna be a significant difference. Um, you know, launch angle's not too far off. Uh, you know, you can tell with that, with that stealth, the minute you hit that five wood, it was night and day difference, <laughs> a lot more confident. Um, and you can start to see that you're, you know, for that 220 number, um, that was our target. That carry with that five wood is so much easier. And that's that autopilot sensation that we we're trying to create with golf clubs. I would, again, as a, as a friend and as a fitter, I'm going to give you that stealth five wood all day long. And if I ever saw a two iron in your golf bag, <laughs> I'm going to put it in upside down. But um, really nice to see. I mean, dispersion is very similar. I just, you know, that launch and spin with the stealth five wood and, you know, that little bit extra yardage and ball speed, it's, it's night and day difference. I look at the, the, the distance for me and dispersion is front to back. Mm -hmm. And looking at, the, looking at the data, front to back on the five wood was almost at kind of our target and mm -hmm. a little bit past. Definitely. Versus kind of a little bit before the target and missing short. Yeah. Where if you, if you need a golf club where you need to be confident to carry a particular distance, mm -hmm. I'm going with that every single time. Totally. If I'm playing a golf course, I don't need to carry much, you know, Maybe I'll have to rip that two right out of my hands anyways. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a visual guy, and, and I say that in all my fits. I, I love looking at dispersion. I think it, it makes these numbers make a lot more sense. That, that stealth dispersion is, is nice and tight, very consistent. You know, we call that a hula hoop out there. It's, uh, <laughs> you, you hit, you know, three or four shots with it, and, and you, every time you hit it, you kind of look back, and you're like, so easy. Yeah. And, that, and that's what you want with, uh, with a golf club. Um, Let's take a look at yours now. So for comparison, we both hit the same two iron. Mm -hmm. You hit what would be your own personal five wood. I did, yeah, um, TSI two. Again, I I have that fear of the driving iron, um, and I shouldn't. I mean, I can I can generally get around a golf course with one if I had to use it. But you know, the reason I put that five wood in the bag, I wanted something that launched a little higher. My greens at the club are small and and run generally fast, so I need something that that comes down and and can stop. That five wood did it for me. If I was playing a driving iron, you can see 2,200 RPMs of spin with uh, yeah. with an, an, an iron that I'm going to approach a green with is not going to help me. No. Um, and and it's not giving me the you know that closer carry or that more consistent carry that I'd be looking for. Your dispersion's almost the same driving iron, maybe a little bit tighter. Just again launching a little bit lower and, and kind of running out closer to the same area. But for me, launch angle and you know, and ball speed off the five wood, it's, it's why it's in my bag. And um, 
you know, it's going to continue to stay in my bag. Well, we see it too with, with your driving iron, your, your shots with the, the driving iron there. The spin is low to the point where, and those were some good shots, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any miss hit will produce so little spin that it could go anywhere, but most likely nowhere. Nowhere, yeah. Or, and that, again, just that confidence of kind of being able to trap it off the turf or, or in some long fescue. If I had a driving iron on a long fescue, I just, I wouldn't do it. I'd honestly rather punch out with a wedge and take my poison that way. I just, I don't want to lay the sod over it and, and bring any bigger numbers into play. Now, if you were out of that, that rough, that kind of fluffy rough, you know, mm -hmm. where give or take, maybe you're going to catch a flyer, maybe it's going to be a little bit sticky, the sole of that five wood as well for players, right? And the, and the in-between club here, which we haven't mentioned, yep. would be something like the UW from Callaway. Definitely. Right, so it, it does kind of fit both of that, but definitely more on the ball speed for sure. as far as, as the fairway is concerned, a little bit longer, distant, or length is kind of right in between those two. So another club to consider, but very different from a hybrid. Totally. Much more like a fairy wood, and I think that's really important. So, but there we have it. Two golf clubs, exactly the same loft. Mm -hmm. Very, very different results for two different players. Yeah, good, good little test. And again, it, you know, we say, you know, don't fit yourself, and, and I'm a victim of it. I, I sometimes do fit myself too often, but you know, this, is, this just solidifies the deal where that five wood's going to stay where it is. Yeah, and I, and I myself, I've been a five wood player for a while. I know we talked earlier in the video. Sometimes I'll use a, a seven wood that I'll mm -hmm. you know open it up so it actually plays a little stronger. So it's around that 19, 20 degree mark. A 20 degree iron in my bag is a scary golf club. Yeah. When it's a 20 degree fairy wood, it's a, it's a very friendly one. Point and shoot. So this is another reminder that when you are looking at loft, whether it be on a fairy wood, a driving iron, maybe it's an iron in your set or a hybrid they're not created equal. Mm -hmm. All of those golf clubs have different centers of gravity. They all have different lengths, which are going to create different speeds. And they're going to react very differently to your swing. We got two different club head speeds here that are actually, I mean, we're fairly close as far as club head speed is yep. concerned, but our deliveries create very different numbers. And I know for myself, I am way more confident in the five wood. Me too. So if you like this video, remember, please use the comment section below. Ask us questions. We wanna know. We wanna help you problem solve issues with your golf bag, questions that you have, whether it be around fitting, whether it be around building, which we're going to be tackling a lot more in the near future. This is all about helping you get more educated about your clubs so you can make better decisions of what goes in your bag. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.